welcome back to Tumblrisms. Today, we're going to be looking at fandoms. There's a, a concept I think most people can wrap their head around. Everybody's a fan of something. Maybe it's sports, or it's an anime, or a video game. Maybe you're a huge fan of a movie franchise, or a, a television franchise. But generally, when you fanboy out about it, or fangirl out about it, you're considered part of the fandom. How dedicated are you? Well, I don't know if we've been doing it right, Internet. I know I certainly haven't, because I'm not shipping anybody. What? What's shipping, Jim? I've never heard of that term before. Uh, don't feel bad. Google has us covered, because why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't their dictionary have a definition for this? What a... What, welcome to the current year. Now, a ship is not a vessel that carries cargo. It's not delivering consumer goods, at least not in this context. The thing that it's delivering are the hopes and dreams of fat 13-year-old girls all over the internet. Because it involves taking characters from a franchise and putting them into a relationship. Hell, it's not just Google that has a definition for this. Even fucking Wikipedia has an article on this. Taking characters and putting them into relationship. What the fuck? Daria? Oh, there's, there's a character I like to ship. You know, usually I like to put Daria Morgendorfer in a relationship with, I don't know, oncoming traffic. <laughs> Now, believe it or not, on a website that's dominated by teenage girls, shipping is kind of a big fucking thing. Who would have thought? My little joke from earlier might have had a little bit of truth in it. I know, it's weird, isn't it? But apparently, shipping is a really big thing on Tumblr. And it's the easiest way to kind of pinpoint the hardcore fans in a fandom. Case in point, Destiel. That's Dean Winchester and Castiel the Angel of the Supernatural franchise. They're combined together. You take a little of each name. It's like a it's like a fanfic version of a Megazord. And the giant hunk of shitty plastic you're left with, in this case, is Destiel. So what kind of relationship is it? Well, if you browse through the search results, you get a real clear idea on exactly where they want to take this. Are they brothers in arms? Are they comrades? Are they friends? Or are they involved in a really hardcore BDSM gay relationship? I'm not saying that there was some anal rape that took place here, but that is a fuck ton of blood to be having on your crotch if you're just chilling with your bro. I'm just, I'm maybe I'm reading into it too much. Maybe I'm reading, no, you know what? No, I'm not. Apparently, no, I'm not. What kinky hardcore shit are these people in this fucking tag imagining is happening between these two? I've heard of rough sex before, but not having to have fucking surgery afterwards to repair the damage that's been done. But apparently the people in the Destiel tag, that's what they think of on a regular basis. I mean, just look at that fucking face. Look at the shame on that fucking face. He knows. He knows it's wrong. He fucking knows where he is, what's going on. Look at that shame. But I can't, you know, I noticed something earlier when we were browsing through those results. It caught my eye right at the top. I don't know if you picked up on it. Crowley. What? So if I'm to understand this right, the ultimate pairing in the supernatural shipdom would be Dean Winchester, Castiel, and Crowley. I, what do you, what do you even call that? Oh, apparently you call it Drowliel in this one search result. This one name that this one person came up with. Congratulations, Tink DW. It's yours, buddy. Maybe they have another name for it, but you know what? I'm going with Drowliel. I like the one that sounds like a pagan chant that's going to summon an earth spirit. Like if I say it with enough conviction, a gnome is going to pop out of my fucking sprinkler system. Oh, sacred Drowliel. I like it. I'm going to go with it. Now, I know you're wondering, because I sure as shit was, what sort of fiction goes with this? I mean, we saw the pictures. I, I think we've got a good idea of where this is going, but what, what backstory are they giving these couplings? Oh, would you look at... Isn't that adorable? Dean falls off a tree while rescuing a kitten. Cass knows that to heal someone, you just gotta kiss it all better. You know, I'd like to take a moment right now just to speak directly to the supernatural fandom on Tumblr, because we've, we've got to talk about something. Specifically, we have to talk about Castiel. Now, I've read some of your fan fictions, and I've looked at a shit ton of your pictures, and I think you're overlooking one major thing when it comes to this particular character. Let's see if we can pinpoint it. Let me see if I can guide you to the proper conclusion. So here we are, and we have Castiel, an angel of God. And how does Castiel appear throughout almost the entirety of the show, with few exceptions? Well, how would you describe him if you were explaining Castiel to somebody? Well, he's always got this fucking look on his face, doesn't he? That neutral, unemotional, almost robotic-like look. Kind of a, a blank slate. You can't really tell what's going on, can you? He also has a habit of speaking monotone. There's not a lot of inflection or personality or emotion in what he says. It's just sort of dead and flat. 
And I seem to recall he also has a lot of trouble dealing with sarcasm and jokes. So if we were to put that all together, dead emotionless face, monotone voice, can't pick up on sarcasm or humor, what does that describe? Does that describe somebody who's going to kiss Dean's boo-boo after he falls out of the tree? Oh, I know what it reminds me of. Oh, there's Castiel again, fucking the dresser. He's autistic. Castiel is the definition of autistic. What are you doing? I asked my priest parents if they shipped Destiel. This is not a drill, people. Okay, so yesterday I asked my parents if they shipped Destiel or if it became canon. How would they react? My mom was like, meh. I don't care either way, but then I asked my dad and he said, Dad, I certainly wouldn't stop watching it if it became canon, and I think it's a nice idea, but I wouldn't want it to be the main focus of the show. Me. So, do you mean, like, a subplot? Dad. Yeah, I just don't want it to take over the show. Me. Whispers to my sister. Holy fuck, he ships it. I wonder what your priest parents' reaction to, I'm not gay. I, I can't be gay, but that angel is pretty fuckable. Yeah, just, just ask good old mom or dad. Just say, hey, mom and dad, you know, I'd love to go to church today. That Jesus Christ guy that they have up on that crucifix in there gets my dick hard. And see what their reaction to that is. My priest parents are okay with the idea of a dude fucking an angel. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that, really. Firm chest, soft shirt. I am author, JJ author, fan, nerd of all sex, positive, asexual, queer, female, single mom, ENFJ, Gryffindor, warrior, CD, sentinel, neutral, good, MILF, no righteous path, chapter 10, and supplemental. Castiel takes care of Dean. This chapter is not safe for work. Graphic, sexual content. I don't know about you, but I'm really tempted to click on that. I mean, after all, this is an author, nerd, nerd of all sex, positive, asexual, queer, female, single mom, ENFJ, Gryffindor, warrior, CD, sentinel, neutral, good, MILF. You just know they write good fan fiction. You know what? Let's, let's take the leap. Let's go take a look. Now, this little journey is going to lead us to Archive of Our Own, which is a website that hosts quite a bit of fan fiction. Lots of fandom stuff to be found on there. Could do a whole video series on that in and of itself. But let's take a look at our little story. God, that is a shit ton of tags. On his 40th birthday, Dean Winchester suddenly begins to worry he may have lost his chance for a real mate. He's been so focused on his business as a 24-hour roofing and repair man that he's never taken the time to date properly, even make a lasting relationship outside of his family. Beginning in their late 30s, Alphas and Omegas start to lose their mating and bonding hormones, making it more difficult and often impossible to mate or bond with anyone past a certain age. But as a modern alpha, Dean would be content with a companion at least. Blood bonds aren't the be-all end-all. However, after a late-night emergency roofing repair call from Castile Novak, Omega Dean starts to hope, yearn. The only hang-up is that Castile admits to being as old-fashioned as the book he teaches, nervous to go against his religious upbringing by being with someone who he can't bond properly, as Alpha and Omegas are intended to do. But he can't deny his attraction to Dean, and despite his sensibilities, he thinks that just maybe he can change for the man he's falling in love with. 52,151 words. Oh boy. That is a whole shit ton of autism. Dean's running his roof and repair business, and he just wants to mate with Castile. <laughs> Holy shit. Let me just be real with everybody for a moment. You would find more heterosexual content if you went to X Hamster and searched gayest shit ever in the gay only tag than you would in the search result for Destiel on Tumblr. Of course, fandoms don't just stop at shipping. It's not just characters within the same franchise. No, they reach outside of the IP. We need multiple fictional universes to cross over with each other. Let me try to put this in context, and maybe an example you might understand. Take Dragon Ball Super, for instance. Now, Tumblr would look at that show, and after writing 182 fanfics about Piccolo and Gohan having a gay relationship, they'd get around to the idea that, you know what would make this better? Some Naruto. And you know what, fuck it. Let's put a little guts in there, too. That's the ultimate universe for me. Uh, what, what are we going to call that, Tumblr? What should we call the combination of Dragon Ball, Naruto, and Berserk? You've got Guts, you've got Goku, and you've got Naruto. I know. Nagugu. That is fantastic. That is my fictional universe. I'm living there. And I'm going to write so many gay fan fictions. 
if you know Guts' backstory, it's not that much of a stretch, because believe me, he's already been stretched out. If you've read the manga, you know what I mean. Oh, but come on, Jim. Tumblr can't be that stupid. I mean, that's a ridiculous example. What, what, could, they, what could they do that would be stupid on that level? Say hello to Super Hulak. That's Supernatural. Doctor Who. And Sherlock Holmes. I can't get enough smarmy British fucks in one show. Let's combine two of them together. And I need some eye candy, so get Dean on in there. Come on, Supernatural, you come on over. Super Hulak versus Homestuck. Both fandoms are looked down upon by the Tumblr community. Seen as annoying, and sometimes they just want them both to shut up. Super Hulak. What? No, fuck you, I won't shut up. My fandom is awesome. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Homestuck. Huh, yeah, Homestuck fandom sucks. Super Hulak. No, fuck you, fuck you, we can kill you all, and hide your bodies so no one will ever know where to find them. Homestuck clicks through some fan art. Super Hulak, you all suck, fuck you. Homestuck, RPS on MSPRP. Super Hulak, you all should just go die, fuck you. The Black J says, I'm sorry, but every time I see someone say something about Super Hulak that isn't positive, the whole fandom just jumps in, throwing insults and creative ways to kill you and make it look like you killed yourself. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to read that again. Jumps in, throwing insults and creative ways to kill you and make it look like you killed yourself. Look, I'm not a part of the fandom or anything, and I'm not making fun of it, but when other people see how badly you handle those situations, you're just bringing your fandom down. Do yourself a favor. And calm your tits, mer person. Super Hulaks, shut the fuck up. We know how to exercise demons faster than anyone. We're a bunch of high functioning sociopaths that know 272,828 ways to kill you and make it look like an accident without them finding the body. We also know how to eat you and torture you, so don't fucking mess with this fandom. Me. Okay, I'm calling the fucking cops. You know, I need to take a... Let's take a step back here. Maybe I'm just looking at a bad bunch of reactions to the Super Hulak community. I mean, they can't be... They can't be that fucking awful, can they? But I'm, I'm noticing a theme that the Super Hulak fandom is fucking psychotic. But where are they getting that from? Oh, you know what? I bet it was this. This single solitary gif from fucking Madden Generator that drove their community insane. Has to be. I mean, if you visit this amazing fucking Tumblr... Doctor Who and its fans suck. Fuck Doctor Who and Sherlock. You find an interesting little piece of Super Hulak history. Now, scrolling down it, it doesn't look like anything special. That is until you get to the very end and you read the reactions that this got. Yeah, that's right. That's not a misprint. That's 536,384 notes. Half a million people reacted to a John Madden gif that was talking shit about Super Hulak. Let's, uh, let's back it up a little. Let's take a look at some of the level-headed reactions that this gif got. Bitch, I will fucking cut you. Just try it, nerd. You've angered the wrong fandom. Shut up, nerd. You're going down, punk. Just you fucking wait. You will learn that this fandom is far worse than you will ever want to know. We may seem soft and shy, but we're just being nice. We can be cold, cruel and mean, and make you suffer and wish you never said what you said. We can send you into the farthest, most empty reaches of the galaxy, summon demons to our disposal, to make you suffer and make you feel the feelings that we experience. And don't fucking think for a single goddamn second that's easy. The amount of emotions that would boil inside of you would literally kill you. So keep your motherfucking distance, and we won't hurt you. So stay the hell back, asshole. If you so much as insult us one more time, we will bring fiery hell upon you and bitch slap you into oblivion. Your move, dildo. You're like 12, calm down. We know how to kill a human and hide the evidence. Your body will never be found, and that is a promise. You're gonna be out after curfew. You do realize a majority of the fandom are 20-somethings, right? Or at least in college. We can find you, kill you, and make it look like you killed yourself. Don't try us, smiley face. Now you might say, that's a bit of an overreaction to a fucking gif, making fun of your dumb little fandom. But you would be wrong. You don't fucking talk shit about Super Hulak, or I will fucking murder you. But you know, now I'm starting to wonder, how off-kilter are these people? I mean, that was a pretty big shit fit. That was a big spurg out over a fucking gif. Uh, you know, how angry do they get when you do something that really goes against the grain? when you say alter a character or write something they don't like. If only there was a clear example 
of how horrible Tumblr fandoms can be when you do something they don't like. What what would that example be? Oh, here we go. Steven Universe fandom is melting down after bullied fan artist attempts suicide. Controversy surrounding a Steven Universe fan artist has spread to the creative team that supported her. Well, you just know that this is going to be a heartwarming moment where we see what a Tumblr fandom really can do. Steven Universe is a beloved animated children's show known for its smart and progressive depictions of its diverse and lovable cast of characters. But these positive qualities in the show itself have led to a very ugly turn of events in the Steven Universe fandom. After a beleaguered fan artist said she attempted suicide after being bullied by members of the fandom who felt her art was problematic, in a bizarre turn of events prompted by the ensuing debate over what kinds of fan art are acceptable, some fans have now turned even against the show's creative team, including show creator Rebecca Sugar. Oh, this is fantastic. So not only will a fandom on Tumblr go after its own members, it will attack the creators of the thing it is a fan of. That is some next level shit right there. We are talking about meta-autism. This is, this is, I'm, my mind is just fucking kapow. It all started last week when a fan artist going by the name Zammy caused a scare on Tumblr when she posted an apparent final note to her Tumblr, then disappeared for three days. When she re-emerged, it was to post a tearful video she claimed was being filmed at a hospital, where she said she was getting the help she needed. Prior to Zami's alarming initial farewell, members of the Steven Universe and Homestuck fandoms had reportedly created more than 40 critical blogs and other social media accounts directed at her because they believed she was purveying problematic depictions of many of the characters she drew. During her time in the fandom, Zami has been accused of a litany of flawed portrayals of characters including perpetuating, racism, stereotyping, transmisogyny, transphobia, apologism, incest, pedophilia, fatphobia, and ableism in her art. For example, when Zami drew a Japanese character from the popular anime Yawamushi Petal, she came under fire for giving the character yellow skin and slanted eyes. Now, I encounter that problem myself quite a bit. You may not know this, but I have a fairly active DeviantArt account where I have a very popular web comment called Mr. Stick Figure. Now, Dave, he's a white guy. But what happens when Dave has a friend named, I don't know, Tyrone? How do I depict Tyrone? I don't want to be racist. Do I give him things that make him more black? Wouldn't that be stereotyping? And I can't really leave his face white, right? I mean, that's, that's like a macro and a microaggression got together and fucked each other. That's a macro mic. So I, I've got to do something. Oh, I know. I'll give him a black face. So they, they got angry that she drew a Japanese character and made the Japanese character look Japanese. Ter that's terrible. Horrible. What are you doing? When she drew a black character, she came under fire for removing her afro and giving her blonde hair. When she drew a Native American Fluttershy, why? From My Little Pony, the response was mixed and often critical, pointing out that she had further stereotyped the character. I'm sorry, but you need to respect Fluttershy, the magical fucking ponies. Native American history. I, I... <laughs> Are these people for real? On the other side of the issue, plenty of people have insisted that it's more important to continue calling out what they see as problematic behavior even if that extends to the kind of social ostracism that led to all of this to begin with. Me not being a pushover for oppression makes me toxic, wrote one user. Fuck that. If you support people drawing canonly fat characters as skinny, or worse, whitewashing POC representation, you can unfollow me right now, because I don't need your shit. On Sunday night, the turmoil reached the Steven Universe production crew, prompting series co-producer Ian Jones Cordy to weigh in with a now-deleted tweet, saying artists should be allowed to draw what they want. The response was immediate. Racist fan art doesn't stop being racist just because it's fan art. Well, this is like a saga in and of itself. I mean, now all these twists and turns, where is it going to end? Meanwhile, the hateful rhetoric around Zombie's participation in the fandom continues, with numerous detractors arguing that she was faking her alleged hospital video. What a twist! Well, isn't that just fucking special? Here you actually have a community that's attacked one of its own for daring to draw their own version of fan art that got the blessing from the creator themselves, and that's still not good enough. We gotta go after them. And even if, even if, all the talk about suicide and hospital videos and arrests, if that was completely fictitious, which there seems to be a substantial amount of evidence that it could be, that doesn't dismiss the amount of shit this person got for drawing a Japanese character yellow, or giving a, a black woman a, a, what, what, a fucking wig? We're gonna act like black chicks don't use weaves? Like, come, who the fuck are we, who are you kidding? 
you know, after having looked through a, a good deal of these communities and really kind of dug into what they're about, I think the easiest way to visualize what a Tumblr fandom would be like is to picture an autistic man stomping his way through a GameStop and macing people in the face because Sonic's arms aren't supposed to be blue. The amount of pure anger when you poke them just a little bit, when you go against the grain just a little bit, when you're having a little bit of fun with some banter, is just astronomical. It really is mind-blowing. They'll get upset with you because you shipped a character they didn't like, or you didn't respect the ship they came up with. You didn't respect their crossover, or the crossover that you did violated some kind of headcanon that they had. They'll even get mad at you if the series creator says, hey, it's okay, go ahead and make that, because fuck the series creator. They know better. Tumblr fandoms are a little bit nutty. So be warned, if you're going to Tumblr and you're going to interact with the fandoms there, don't ask questions. Otherwise, it'll end up like this. Why, why do... <laughs>